Last time on To Do, we set out on a 500 kilometre boat trip around the Kimberley coast towards Honeymoon Bay, stopping at various locations to explore and fish along the way. The forecast originally was for five days of 10 knot winds, but the reality has been rather different. The swell has picked up to over four metres, and the winds have turned variable up to 35 knots, making for a very uncomfortable ride. For the safety of all on board, the decision has been made to seek shelter in a small, unnamed cove and ride out the bad weather until it's safe to motor again. We have named our temporary mooring just east of Atlantis Cove, Delay Bay. A tiny inlet that isn't even drawn on our navigational maps and charts. We still have a further 230 kilometres to go before hitting Honeymoon Bay. But in these conditions, our fuel consumption has been taking a beating. We must stay put here until conditions improve, just to have enough fuel to complete this next leg of the trip. Welcome to Delay Bay, our home for the next five days. Just crawled out of the cabin from sleep last night had a look out here and there's that massive croc. He would have to be about four metres in length. You can see when he shows his back, you can see the, the tips on his back, really prehistoric. We were actually going to camp on this beach. We were going to roll the swags out. But yesterday afternoon, when we were scouting out the area, the boys went for a walk down downstream and I stayed here. I was just sitting in the chair. I was actually on the sat phone and uh, spun around and here's this guy just out the middle here, absolutely massive. So we decided against camping on the beach, which is a good thing because this morning he is now scouting out that beach. He's keeping a, a close eye on us. He's not the only croc in this area, but yeah, he's getting pretty close. We didn't see any croc tracks yesterday and that's why, because the tide comes up so far, it's washing away his marks. Bloody awesome. With a size of around five metres, this massive croc could easily be over 50 years old, and they get pretty cunning when they have lived that long. The big buffy nose on him. When a croc makes out six and a half metre boat look small, he demands your respect. east of Atlantis Cove. Now this wasn't a planned stop, however we had some really bad weather out the front. It was an easy four metre swell, so this was the safest spot we could find. It's been a bit tricky anchoring up in here with the variation in the tides, however it is way safer in here than being out the front there, that's just insane. And we saw a massive croc here this morning. We've got the boat anchored up, it's low tide at the moment, we've anchored it front and rear and we're going to go up further and explore. The boys went for a walk yesterday afternoon and Ads wants to show me something over here first before we go, go and catch up with him. Over here, Pen. Come and check this out, mate. <laughs> oh my goodness. Look at the size of his head, mate. That's insane. He didn't look that big from over there. I know he came within four metres of the boat. Yeah, you can see I'm standing well back, mate, <laughs> yes. because uh, they can move fairly quickly for a short period. We do have some of uh, people watching out for us, but yeah. that is massive That's and he's a insane. long way up. <laughs> Look at his thick, chunky Look arms. The, the paws, mate. Yeah. Bigger than my hand. That's crazy. And his snout right up here. So just being safe here, Penzo, 
You keep an eye out. Yep. Well, his claw is longer than my finger. Wow, that is and, insane. You know, that's the first part of his little elbow there. Wow. And his snout, you know. Mate, Goodness That's me. half. Yep, he's huge, mate. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah, he is, isn't he? Yeah, I'm not lying there anymore, mate. <laughs> Fair enough. Let's go. <laughs> Penzo, I went for a walk yesterday, mate, while well, you were having a little snooze. I walked up the uh, river here, found some fresh water, mate. You're going to love that. No way. And some awesome fishing spots. Really? That yeah. sounds amazing. I've been stuck on that boat for four or five days now, yep. so I'm keen for a walk. Well, you can see I've buried my feet in the sand here, mate. I'm <laughs> quite happy to be on solid ground. I know, ground. solid ground. This is great. All right, show me. Lead right. the way. Boots. Yep. We're going to need them. True. We've got a fishing spot about halfway, mate. Okay. The tide's looking a bit low, so we might drop these off and I'll go show you that... Uh, the water pools and stuff I found. I'm interested. Just Take be careful. Me there. Got my favourite little drop bears on here. I yeah. rigged yours up as well, mate. Yeah, thanks for that. I'm keen to try those. You've had good success, so great success with them. <laughs> There's been some harsh coastline along this journey, mate. It's been we were treacherous, hasn't it? So treacherous. We were so lucky to find somewhere like this. I know. Imagine coming to shore that you had to come ashore and you couldn't find anywhere to go. I mean, <laughs> by chance we found that little bay. I know. And this creek was a bonus. Yeah, we're so lucky. Like, like you say, if we were shipwrecked and you didn't come across this, you'd be stuffed. There was nothing else on that journey. No. no. Mate, this is where I saw some big fish yesterday. Okay. Obviously the tide's out. Oh, there's some big As, fish there. Yeah, there's some big mm. fish there. As you can see, there's a big drop. Yes. <laughs> um, mate, we might leave this stuff here. Yep. I've got some more stuff to show you up ahead. Let's go up there, right? Eh? That's where the fresh water is? That's where the surprise fresh water is. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to leave that stuff here. You had me at fresh water. Let's go. The moment you've been waiting for, Penzo. I up. am so wrapped to see fresh, clean water. We're up a couple of pools, so this is crystal clear, mate. Wow. Just having a nice little tub in here. That's why I smelt so delicious yesterday. <laughs> After four days on a boat. Oh, I tell you what, I can't wait to wash the salt off me. See that little hole there? Sitting in there perfectly, yeah, mate. Yeah, good spot. Like a little turtle. <laughs> I was buried. <laughs> mate, this is flaming awesome. Like to chance upon this is yeah. pretty special. Yeah. We've got so much more up ahead too. All right, so we'll come back to this We're later. We're coming back, mate. All right, cool. Sorry to hold you off. <laughs> Not a lack of fresh water anyway, is it? No, mate, it's all coming out up mm. here. That's what I mean. Got rid of all that brackish and stuff. Crystal clear here. Yeah, wow. Well. Further we go, the better it gets. Eat. Every person can have their own little bathtub. Yep. When you're in this side of the country, you've got to be croc smart. So one of the things is, make sure if you're going to have a dip, go up a couple waterfalls. Also, make sure the water's crystal clear and have a good scope around. As you can see, this one is spotless. We've gone up about probably five or six levels. Fresh as anything, and I can't wait to jump in. And this is about as far as I got yesterday. Okay, mate, yeah, well, this is a beautiful spot. It's even complete with lilies. Yeah, looking beautiful. Mate, just stop for a sec. Besides the wind, listen for up there. Kind of like a thundering sound? Thundering roar, yeah. I heard it on the boat again last night. Okay. I think there's something special up there. Yeah. Yeah, I can definitely hear something. See if uh, I can get closer. Yeah, mate. Now there's a deep pond, Dad. That's amazing. Wow. Look at that dark hole down there. Beautiful. It's like a dark green. So deep. And you can actually just make out the ocean from here. Still looking ugly, mate. It is. You can see white caps still. Looks like we're swimming tomorrow. Oh, well, you know, someone's <laughs> going to do it. I found some great spots up here, Penzo. Have Hurry you? Hurry up, mate. Let's go. All right, I'll be there in a sec. We have been following this absolutely spectacular water course towards the south and as we go along it is getting better and better. Each rock hole is getting deeper, clearer, more blue. Absolutely beautiful. We've been picking our way along the edge. It's rough going over these rocks and we looked up and we spotted this. It looks like two female forms. I can't tell you much more than that. It's not my story to tell but really cool and special to actually see this and when you're in these kinds of areas keep an eye out for this kind of art depending on the time of day that you come in sometimes you need a little bit of light because they can be faint because they are very old 
some more rock art there, Ed. Right? To that. There's a little bit there. That's well hidden, isn't it? It is, yeah. It's not a big picture. It's here. You look up the rocks, mate. That's it. This is spectacular, isn't it? How about that? I think we're up at the end, Pedro. <laughs> Look this at that. is it, wow. You can see the black marks on the rocks where it must flow in the wet season. It looks like a massive pool, mate. It does, doesn't it? Wow. From walking all the way up there to find paradise up here. I know. Out of that bad weather. We've got this, aren't we lucky? Yeah, how we are, mate. Let's go <laughs> enjoy that. It has taken us over two hours to get here, climbing over all these big rocks, but it has been so worthwhile. Check that out, this amazing fresh water pool surrounded by pandanus and this beautiful cliff face here where the water flows over during the wet season. It's still flowing at the moment on the right hand side here. It, it takes your breath away and we've come out of some really terrible weather out the front on the boat and that's the reason we actually found this spot. So from that, we've got this reward and I'm not complaining at all. I'm just gonna sit here and soak it up. This is our first boat beach fire and we are loving it. Had this magnificent sunset around us, pink skies, boat sitting nicely in the water, happy day. Cold beer. Crackers, cheese. This is living mate. <laughs> Leg of this journey is about 60 k's um, and it's the most exposed on the coastline so we have to have mid weather to make that next leg but we're not going to leave this spot to know that we've got good weather just way too risky so that's the update for today Berkeley River somewhere about 20 k's that way Still two and a half plus metre of swell, blowing maybe 35 k's an hour. Only bit of protection is where we are. Another 24 hours, we're going to have to wait here. This is the end of day four in what we've now called Delay Bay. We've renamed it because it was an unexpected stop. We're having steak and potatoes on the beach. We have some crocs still beside us. Uh, things are okay, food and water's fine. Just waiting for this weather to change, aren't we, Ed? Yeah, mate, should uh, calm down tomorrow and we'll give it a good look in the morning, nice and early. Yep. But yeah, the guard dogs are still swimming past, so. Yeah, keeping an eye out. Be careful of that. But yeah, Happy this is fairly much paradise. Yeah, it is. So time has come to leave Delay Bay. The weather is looking a lot better today. So we're gonna poke our nose out the front and have, have a go. Our ultimate goal is still to get to Honeymoon Bay. So ready to go out and have a look, Eggs? Yeah, mate, it's calmed down a lot. Yep. I'm very sad to be leaving this place. It's been home for five days now. Yeah, I know. It's, uh, we got caught up here, but what a place to get caught up. I know, we've been very Some fortunate amazing here. place. Beautiful. So yeah, Benzo, let's hit it, get out of this bay, stick out the front, mate, see what it's like. All right, no dramas. If it's too bad, we can always come in anyway, we've got that option. You are the captain now, mate. <laughs> All right, let's go. The wind has dropped a considerable amount, so our next destination is Seaplane Bay, a 24 kilometre run further up the Kimberley coast. We have left Delay Bay finally, and our ultimate goal still is to get to Honeymoon Bay. But the wind's still up, so we're just going to sit here in this nice protected bay. Now, we are not the only ones who thought this was a good spot for protection. There's a lot of history here. This bay is called Seaplane Bay. Now, the story is that two German aviators in May 1932, they hit bad weather and they're actually heading for Darwin, and they had a storm and it blew them off course. 
and they had to land a little further from here. It's a seaplane that had floats on it and they had 15 litres of fuel left. So they decided that they would refuel, fly again and this is as far as they got. They beached the seaplane on one of these shores here. Now the next part of the story gets even more interesting. Unable to find water here, the pair thought it might be a good idea to backtrack because originally they saw an Aboriginal man but they couldn't communicate with him but thought he may be able to send for help. So they had no water, this is harsh terrain, just look at the backdrop behind me, it's insane terrain they were trying to cross and they actually crossed some, some of these bays and they were chased by crocodiles, they lost their clothes, they, they were now naked, they're getting bitten by sand flies. How long could they hold on? How long could they keep going for? The aviators didn't actually have any idea where they were. They thought they were on Melville Island up near Darwin. They had no idea they were on the Kimberley coast. Now, after the crocodile chase, they decided to come back to the plane and undo one of the floats off the bottom of it and use that as a canoe to head down further. They paddled for four days and four nights. Unbelievable to think, sitting on that makeshift canoe in this kind of conditions. They ended up not too far from King George Falls. Under a rock ledge there, they came ashore and that's where they stayed. And this is where it's kind of special to us because our friend Ronnie Morgan, some of his relatives actually helped come in and rescue these guys. Before we left, I spoke with Colin Morgan about this. Back with that after the break. We're here today with Ronnie's dad, Colin Morgan. Thanks so much for your time, Cole. Now, Colin is gonna tell us a story of survival and rescue of the German pilots back in 1932. So Cole, how did you come about to hear this story? What events happened and how did it all unfold? Well, um, like when I was a, a young boy, my, fa uh, my grandfather, you know, take me out bush and he was um, teaching me survival skills. But throughout the time we went out, he was telling me the story about these two German pilots. He just had two gurry up, you know, that um, almost died up there uh, near King George Fall. And that means white person? White person, yeah. And, um, well, he told me that this day there was a group of them, and he was one of them walking up and uh, walking past. They were going back to Clumbrew. And um, late in the afternoon, and something, you know, like this German pilot uh, walk out, one of the guys walked out, and they looked like this, and they said, hey. <laughs> what's what's said, that? Said, what's that? So they, they, they crept down and had a look. And inside the cave, they saw the other um, pilot inside the cave. And, and he wasn't too good, was he? Yeah, he wasn't too good at all. So they went went back and then they decided to go, well, they were heading to Clumbru. They went to Clumbru real quickly, told the um, priest that there's two white fellas up there and if they don't get attention, they're going to die. Yeah. You know? So he quickly mounted a rescue and they went back. And by then, you know, the German pilot, both of them were laying down because um, they had a lot of food there, but the water water that was there coming out of the um, ground ceased to... Ah, run out of water. Ran out of water, yes. So they were dehydrating. Ah. So at that time, they were uh, uh, helping them to um, come back good again. Um, the, the priest decided, well, I'll have to send a runner in to, um, to the police station here in Wyndham so they can bring, you know, uh, go out and rescue him. So what he did was he wrote, he wrote a note and um, sent the guy off and he a day and a day ahead. Then he said, no, I'll send a second one. Mm. My grandfather was the second runner and um, wrote another note and then sent him off. So he ran like practically nearly under, under 300 kilometers. That's incredible. And he said like, um, like, uh, three days, you know, but he was running day and night. Wow. He didn't stop. He caught the other guy up in um, Forest River. Even though he left first? Yes. <laughs> oh, wow. And the boat wasn't, wasn't there. They were expecting the boat to take them into Wyndham. Ah, that next leg, yeah. yep. The first runner decided, well, he wasn't going to go any further. He, he stayed in uh, the community. Wow. But my grandfather, because he was handed a task, he said, no, I'm, I'm, I'm going to take this in. And there's lives involved, isn't yep. there? Yeah. So what he did was he swam the forest, crocodile infested water, 
and um, ran across here to the gut, runs into the, like you've got the Pentecost and the Jurek runs into the gut, into the Cambridge Gulf. So after swimming that, come again, he had to cross one more, the King River. Ah. And then he uh, went into the police station in uh, Wyndham and handed the note. The policeman read it and all, oh, so they, they manned a rescue with the, wow. with the barge. That's yeah. incredible. What a distance he ran, and not easy country to cross either. No. Yeah. No. And um, they gave me a lift back to my grandmother's country, Wundagri. And uh, but they did give him, for his effort, a pair of shorts, uh, a stick of tobacco, uh, I think uh, tea and tea and sugar. Wow! That's it. For all that length that he ran, that's what he got. Mm -hmm. Wow! <laughs> Jeez, but it, those pilots would have been dead had it not been for him taking that message. Yeah, yeah. What was your grandfather's name? Ronald Morgan, but his um, his uh, bush name was Anomaly. Ah, oh, what a what a man, eh? Hey? Yeah, what a journey. And thank you so much for sharing that with us too. We really appreciate it, Paul. Yeah, You're thank welcome, you. <laughs> for the rest of the details on Hans Bertram and Adolf Klausman's story of survival, grab a copy of Flight Into Hell, written by Hans himself. We have finally turned the corner on that last headland. Honeymoon Bay is in our sights, 11 days at sea. Ads, come for a boat trip. We're gonna go four days, we're gonna go around the coast. Awesome, <laughs> I'm in. We have been at sea for 11 days. We've been caught up in some horrendous weather. It's been awful. Yeah. It's been awful. I cannot wait to get on that ground, <laughs> on that beach, mate. And I'm just going to sit there for a moment. <laughs> Kiss the beach. I'm probably going to be rocking for about three uh, days. Well, for the whole time we've been on the boat, we haven't even camped on shore because the crocodiles no, have we're, been too we're intense. In my be we're in my bedroom here, we mate. Are, this is yeah. it. <laughs> now, good job to get here, mate. No, it's awesome. been an epic journey. That is, we, look, we've seen some amazing sights. We've found some treasures. You know, one day we'll probably go back by the uh, roads and work our way in. Heli oh, heli oh, I like the helicopter right here. <laughs> But you know, we'll track back in there. We've done the inland coast, now we've done the outland coast of that same area. Mate, what a journey. I really can't wait to get on solid ground. Yeah, me too, mate. But I know it's tempting, like I know we want to go in because it's been such an intense journey, but let's have one last fish, hey? Enzo, it's just there. The land's just there. <laughs> Come on, I'll bait you up. All right, mate, let's go. <laughs> oh, got you that time. Do you travel all yep. this distance by boat? I really can't leave without a rip of fish in the freezer. Oh, that's a nice. It's pretty golden, baby. Is it? And this guy will do nicely. That is awesome. Line yeah, is out. Afternoon, son. That is what we come for. You don't get down our way. That's ours. Awesome. We are from Queensland, so yeah. That's an awesome fish. That's the fish of the day so far. I reckon yeah. so. Out of the town. <laughs> Would you have a look at the sounder? They're stacking up. These goldies are in the area. You need to get back down there, mate. You actually lost a sinker, though. Oh, I lost two sinkers. Jesus. Okay, I've got to do some repairs here. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Big cod. Oh, man. Look at mine. I'm sorry. Oh, hey, Enzo, <laughs> showing off. Oh, hey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. hey. Yeah, put a bit of hook up. <laughs> nice ball that files down below. Bales down. Bales down. Yahoo! What a hole! Well done, Pedro. <laughs> Three different species. <laughs> In one drop. In one drop. In nine metres of water, currently drift fishing, we found this one spot. Every time we sweep over it, we're getting hits. Even better than the last one. It's getting bigger and bigger. Oh, that would have to be a strong pod 55, 60. 55, I'd say. Yeah. He's a good size. Very tasty fish right there. Golden snapper, they're part of Luton John's family. Yeah. One of our favourite. They are indeed. There we go, 63 centimetres long. That is a magnificent looking golden snapper. Enzo, last cast of the day, mate. All right. Sun's come on. going down. We've had an epic time fishing here. You've got dinner, <laughs> multiples. <laughs> I want dry land. All right, mate. <laughs> we'll take you there. This is last cast. Yeah, but the sound is lighting up, mate. I We're know. staying. It's so <laughs> tempting to stay, isn't it? <laughs> Over the last 10 years of producing this series, there has been a handful of experiences that are really etched into my memory. Surviving this boat trip and motoring into Honeymoon Bay was truly one of those occasions. I couldn't have done it without both Adam and BJ by my side, sticking with me through thick and thin. 
to them, I say thank you. See you next time on Top of Down Under.